Hello, welcome back. Hello, teacher. How are you? How are you going, my mister? Yeah. How's it going back in uh, in Greece? Is it hot? Great. The weather is great here. Not hot and not uh, cold. It is very ah, good. Yeah. Perfect. I yeah, like excellent. it. <laughs> excellent. Same here. I mean, here in Northern Ireland, it's about 25 now. A bit of sunshine. I can see some blue sky. It's, it's lovely. I'm enjoying it. Hello, Vladimir. Welcome back to class. Hello again. Hi, guy. Nice to see you. Likewise. It's good to have one student that, that's showing their video for, for a change. Usually, <laughs> all I see is uh, Sam. Always see your lovely picture, even though it's a very nice picture, Sam. But <laughs> sometimes it's good to see a video. There we go. Silva has got another video on. Oh no, it's gone off again. Ah, uh, he's trying. <laughs> no problems. That's fine. Sometimes I don't know. Maybe there's a more more chance of having a um, you know connection problem if the video is on. I don't know. Perhaps. You know about you into computers, Vladimir, right? You you would know. Yes. Yeah. Does it matter if the video is on, or it just depends yeah. on the internet connection? Yeah. Sometimes if you have the problems with your internet, mm. you have to switch off your video. Ah, so it does help. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, Silva. Silva decided to leave his camera on. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah, but some 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 afraid there. Yeah. So by broadcasting video, it will affect my connection. You know, it will affect my voice. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. That's problem. As, as soon as you notice there's a problem or some sort of interference, and you can just quickly switch it off, and um, you know, hopefully they'll improve it. Um, yeah, it looks like we're having a bit of a slow start, um, but we'll see. Hopefully, people will start joining soon. Right. There we go. Aka Ken, welcome back. Hello, how are you going? <clears throat> so far, we have five different countries the UK, for myself, Aka, Japan, Isam, Greece, originally from Syria. Silva, you're from Indonesia, yeah? Yes. And Vladimir mm -hmm. from from Russia. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> See, isn't that great, guys, to have this multicultural international class? Yeah. It's not possible to have that in a in a real classroom. Yeah. Sometimes. But yeah, it is really great. Usually yeah, it's not if, the case. If that that's a kind of uh, you know good good point part of the internet. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you you're new to Colingo. Are you, Aka? This is your second time. Yes. You uh, actually, my Mexican friend, uh, you know, informed me about this uh, this site on yeah. Skype. So I noticed, wow, th this would be the good for me. <laughs> so I joined. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just like Skype, isn't it? We use Google Hangouts to communicate. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's excellent. I mean, look, there's one more viewer in the lobby. Eddie Jassa, join the class, Mike. Come on. <laughs> Good to join. Heidi, welcome, Heidi. How you going, Heidi? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Welcome to the party. <laughs> okay, look, I think we'll, we'll get going. Uh, we have about, it's more than half the class now. So, um, for those, I think all of you know each other from the previous class, apart from Isam, who just joined us. So, let's quickly go have the little introduction before we start. And at the same time, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw at you the actual uh, warm-up warm -up question for this class, okay? So I'd like you guys to, you know, briefly introduce yourself, like the usual way where, where you're from and what, you know, what are you, what do you do? Are you a student or uh, <clears throat> do you work? And then answer this question for me, okay? Uh, one winter, okay, the house next to mine burned down. No one was hurt, okay? What do you think happened? All right, so one winter, the house next to mine burned down. 
so my neighbor's house burnt down, but nobody was hurt. What do you think happened? Okay, I'd like you to answer this question after you sort of give me a quick, a brief intro. Okay, guys, so let's start with Akka. Uh, something you said, I don't understand. Uh, can you tape the, uh, the last... Oh, yes, sure. Uh, sorry. I will, I, will yeah, put I, the actual, yeah. I will put the actual question in the chat, in the Kongo chat. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay, there's the question. So after you give me your intro, uh, try, attempt to answer this question. Okay, so should I intro, introduce yes, myself please. first? Yes, yeah, quick okay. intro, but... Mm -hmm. uh, first. Okay, so yeah, hello everybody, I'm from Japan, and <laughs> yeah, nice, nice to see you, and uh, yeah, um, so I think, you know, the, 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 in the winter time, many people are using heater, and some mm. heater, uh, you know, uh, uh, using kerosene, so maybe okay. uh, the, the, the fire from the kerosene heater, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, caused the fire, caused the fire, and then uh, the house burned burned down. Burned down. And mm. but they re realized the fire very quickly, so they could uh, get out from the house. So they they were mm. safe. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, good thinking, though. Good thinking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see if Heidi. Hello. I'm Heidi yes. from Japan. Maybe the house owner was smoking in the bed. Many cases mm -hmm. of uh, the f uh, fire, uh, the reason is uh, smoke, a uh, cigarette. Cigarette. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's a possibility. Yes. Thank you, Heidi. What about uh, Isan? What do you think? Uh, give me your quick intro first and then. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Isam. I am from Syria and currently I live in Greece. And the, the, I want to ask you the boring uh, down is why boring or what happened again uh, after? Burned. Yeah, after how, how do you think? Why? Um, uh, yeah, why? What yeah. happened? To, how did it happen? Yeah. I think uh, when someone elected something, something will be the, like this. If you, if you will, uh, forgot something uh, onto the over, and uh, if you smoke something and don't take care how to uh, switch off it, will be like this. That's possible. Thank you, uh, Sean. What about you? What do you think? Please give me an introduction first. About what teacher, sorry. Um, basic, uh, just give me a quick intro about yourself and then try to answer the question that I've put up there. The question is, uh, one winter the house next to my house, my neighbor's house, it burned down. Okay, no, nobody was hurt, but what do you think happened? What caused it? Okay. Sorry. Do you understand the question? No, sorry. Okay, the, the question is, one winter, okay, the house next to mine burned down. Okay, my neighbor's house burned down. Nobody was hurt, okay? What do you think? Oh, she's gone. What do you think happened? She dropped out. <laughs> okay, Silva, you want to attempt? Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Silva Bronsconi from Indonesia. Um, uh, I was a student a week ago, but now I'm no longer a student. <laughs> so I got, I'm a graduated student. I am working with my professor right now as an assistant. Yes. Um, Excellent. Uh, the thing about winter, uh, in Indonesia we don't have winter because we, we're like tropical country. Uh, <laughs> so I don't really know how to answer the question because I have no, you know, uh, I don't have sense about winter, what happens in winter. I don't even have no lie. <laughs> mm, that's fine. I so I don't know how to respond to the question. 
Uh, you know, actually, it doesn't have to be related to winter. It can just it can happen during any time of the year, any season. You know, but it's, I'm just giving you like a time frame when it happened during winter. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So when so it comes to uh, the house uh, burning down, uh, got got burning down. I mean, uh, mostly it caused by uh, electricity here in my in my uh, mm -hmm. country. You know, uh, where empty house. Where the owner of the house go to some some places and they left the house uh, with. Uh, you know, with the refrigerator uh, on, or you know, the electricity is still on, so it can probably uh, trigger the short. Uh, I don't know how to how to say it in English. Short, short, short circuit. I think you want to say short circuit. Short circuit. That is, yeah, yeah, that is what I want. So that's okay. what happened, and then triggers fire that will burn mm -hmm. down the house. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's pos definitely possible. Okay, thank you. That's um, well explained. And Vladimir, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> First, give us your intro, yeah. Oh, okay. Hello, guys. My name is Vladimir. I'm from the Russian Federation. I am a web developer. Okay. It seems to me like it was a, pro a problem with gas stove, so mm -hmm. it can, it could cause the fire. Mm, it could have caused, could have caused it the fire. Could have caused the fire. Excellent. Well done, guys. Okay. Um, the reason why I asked this particular question, right, was <clears throat> to actually elicit from you guys. Uh, models of deduction, which is our actual grammar skill. This is what we're focusing on. Models of deduction and um, basically who knows what this is? Who understands this grammar point? Models of deduction. Uh, you can see on our title. Can anyone give me an example? Heidi, we in one of my classes. I think I did this once before. And I spoke of models of deduction. Do you remember? Maybe you yeah. were not in the class. From the uh, owner, of the house owner might have uh, been smoking in the bed. Ah, that's better. That's what I'm looking for. See, might have been. All right, this is a model of deduction, isn't it? Might have, uh, could have, like I told uh, Vladimir. See, he used could. He was already halfway there. So I just added have. So could have, might have. What else do we have? Should have. Should have. Should have. Mm. No. <laughs> we are, we're looking at the past, something that happened in the past. Yeah, so. Have. No, possible could. have. Mm, no. Possible. You can use possible, mm. but you have to put either. Uh, could have or might have. There are two more I'm, I'm looking for. You got two out of the four. Ma must two have. Missing. Must have. Well done, Aka. Must have and one more. Would so we have, have. Must have. Might have, and could have. There's one more in between, which belongs with might have. W uh, would have. No, no that's, that's uh, no. Starts with an M as well. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, almost there. Yeah, it's half, <laughs> half the word, half it. I want the first half. May. May have. Might, yes. might. <laughs> may. That's it. May have. So we have must have, might or may have, and we have could have. All right. Those are the four. Uh, models of deduction we're going to focus on. And our topic is science and technology. So, um, but before we do that, uh, I want to touch upon some pronunciation, okay? Uh, <clears throat> okay. In this pronunciation, 
parts we are talking about uh, contrastive stress contrastive stress so for example if we who knows what that means contrastive stress stress you heard this before contrast Wait, I don't know yeah I've put it in the Conigo chat there contrastive it's stress it's like it's like combining two words into uh, one word like should mm. have and should have. I don't know. Mm. Um, no, actually, there are three tones. It's got to do with the tone, the way you say a certain sentence. Okay. It, it is difficult word. Yeah, yeah. It's it's quite it's it's not very common. I mean, it's common, but uh, learners of the English language they they tend to struggle with this a little bit. Uh, it all comes down to how you want to. Uh, say a certain sentence depending on how you feel or what you mean okay so let's let me give you some examples here um, okay this sentence here no I don't like tea I like coffee okay now there, there are different ways of saying this to deliver a different meaning okay to, to, to give a different meaning. All right, so because uh, the, the the tone will change. You don't you don't just say I don't like tea. I like coffee. You know, there's a certain certain words in this sentence will ha will be higher pitched. You know, will, will have a higher pitch, a higher tone than the other words in that sentence. So, how do you think this should be uh, said? How should it sound? Does anyone want to try? I don't like tea, I like coffee. I don't like no. tea, I like coffee. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very good. So we have stress on tea yes. and coffee. Excellent. So, so there should be a higher hand on tea, right? And even higher on coffee. So uh, Vladimir said it almost perfectly. Uh, actually, he, he said it correctly, yeah. So, no, I don't like tea, I like coffee. You, you hear that? It has a meaning now. No, I don't like tea, I like coffee. How should it sound? Okay. To try? So, this is what we're talking about. Uh, right. Let me see if I can give you another one. Right, so basically there are three... Um, the stress will have three parts. There's the volume, how loudly you say it, the pitch, how high the pitch is, and of the actual stress. Coffee. You don't have, you don't have to make it that long, but sometimes a certain expression, certain words will be longer than others, or longer than normal. So those three things you should keep in mind. Volume, pitch and length. So volume as in how loud you say it, pitch how high the tone is, and length of the actual stress of that word. All uh, right, so, okay, what about this one? Pedro can't swim, but Carlos can. I already gave it to you. So this is another example. Pedro can't swim, but Carlos can. See, Carlos is high, like Pedro can't swim, but Carlos can. Yeah, or Silva can't swim, but he, he can actually. Is it you that, no, somebody likes, no, no, Aka, you like swimming. You like Ian Thor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silva can't swim, but Aka can. He loves Ian Thor. He loves swimming. Okay. <laughs> so, are there any questions, guys? Are you confused? I hope you're so, not. So, uh, Maybe positive thing uh, mm -hmm. can be, you know, reinforced by stress. Uh, I mean, stressed more yep. than negative thing. Um, in, in swimming case, uh, somebody can swim, can can swim, but some some other can swim. Yeah, you can definitely. Yeah, but not necessarily. It can still be. Um, 
It, it depends. Like I'm, like I'm, like I said. Now look, let me give you a scenario. Okay, let's say you're in a, in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in a restaurant now, and you ordered a uh, soup. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the waiter comes and you're complaining to the waiter about the soup. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are two two ways you can you can sort of complain and which give a different meaning, right? So mm -hmm. one is by saying, "Okay, waiter, this soup is cold. This is a this is a cold soup." Mm. Okay, oh, hold on. Let me, let me think about this. I I wanted a uh, a cold. No, this is a cold soup. Uh, I asked for a hot soup, and then the waiter would reply, "Oh, you wanted a hot soup. See, the hot, hot is high pitched, and it's, it's louder. Okay, and uh, then so you keep that in mind. The, the waiter will give you the same answer. Okay, mm -hmm. so the first thing you say, you wanted a hot soup, not a cold soup. Okay, then the other thing you can say." Uh, um, this soup is hot, but it's not actual soup because it's too watered down. There's too much water inside. So this is hot, mm -hmm. but it's not soup really, right? So the waiter has the same mm -hmm. same sentence as before, but now how would you change that tone? Before it was hot. So which word now would be stressed? What do you think? You wanted hot soup, like oh, you wanted hot soup. So now, give me Maybe the ending. I would, I would stress hot. Again, even though now I'm complaining yeah. about it is soup. Uh, it is soup, but I order ordered uh, uh, cold soup. Cold soup. Now it, the soup is cold, but, but I ordered hot soup. This that's the first meaning you wanted to express. Now you have a different problem you want to express. Now the soup is hot, right? But it's too watered down. It's it's like water, so it's not really soup. So how will the waiter now say, "Oh, you wanted hot soup"? That's I'm saying it now in a monotonous tone. But where's the stress now? Before it was hot soup. What about now? Where's the stress? Uh, maybe. I, Are you following? Maybe guys? there. Uh, I want to have a kind of a real soup, so maybe I would stress. Later part. It's too wa mm. water. You're not stressing now. It, yeah, it's the waiter that has to stress. So the waiter is gonna stress. Mm -hmm. Before the waiter stressed on, oh, you wanted you wanted hot soup. What's what's the waiter gonna say now? Because you're complaining about the soup. You're not complaining about it being hot or cold. Now you're complaining about the actual soup. So what's the waiter gonna say now? Where's the stress? Same sentence as before. Hi, hi, everybody. Yes, Sars, go ahead. Um, I Lars. think the stress. Yeah, I think the stress gonna be like um, in the cold soup. No, I mean, like the watery soup, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I think the soup is not good enough. You need to take it back to the kitchen and get him back, like right one, like the one he ordered. It. Okay, I've put the extra sentence. <clears throat> This is the waiter uh, speaking now. Oh, you wanted hot soup, right? So the sentence will stay the same in both situations. But one thing changes, his tone, the stress. First, you were complaining about the soup being cold. Okay, now he says, he will say, oh, you wanted hot soup, right? That sort of replies to what he said. See, the, the stress here is hot. Now, the next thing you're complaining about, different scenario, um, it is the soup is too watery. Yes, so you're complaining about the soup. Uh, okay, I ordered a hot soup, but this is not soup. This is water. <laughs> okay, so how would the, uh, the the waiter reply now? Same sentence, or you wanted hot soup. But which word here is that doesn't need the actual stress? I think the waiter need to ask like, I mean, you need to apologize basically. Yeah, he needs to apologize, but uh, the question is now, what, what, where is, this, where is the actual uh, stress? 
In this sentence, um, I'll just put in the calling chat. The waiter would stress soup. Ah. That's it. In that context. Well done. In that context, it's different. So, oh, you want the hot soup. You see the difference? <laughs> oh, you wanted hot yeah. soup. Yeah. Because you're complaining about the soup. Uh, duh, of course I want hot soup. You know? Because you're complaining about the soup not actually being soup. It's just water. There's no flavor. So now the waiter says, oh, you wanted hot soup. And before, the stress was hot. Why? Because you're complaining it's too cold. This soup is too cold. Oh, you wanted hot soup. I get it. You see the point now? You see the difference? Same sentence, two different stress points give you different meaning. Okay? Okay, that's what I wanted to get off my chest. So do you understand now? Yeah. Yeah? So yeah. you have to be careful when uh, this is the, 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 cup, the, the contrast of stress, okay? And then we can give many more examples, but we, we don't have time to go on and, and um, dwell on it. But I wanted to share this with you. So when you're actually, uh, you know, you want to deliver some sort of meaning about, you know, a certain situation, then um, make sure your stress is correct because you will give a different meaning. All right? Okay, guys. Um, now, let me give you a. I should say, what's next now? The grammar. Hmm. Uh, right, so models of deduction. Let's go through them. I'm going to screen share this so you guys can see. Here we go. Can you see that? Uh, yeah. It's too small. But it's too small. Okay, how about now? If you can make it, uh, it is good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, give it a few seconds. I think it's a bit uh, delayed. There's a lag. Right. So, models of deduction. Right? Tell us how likely it seems that something happened. Right? So, for example, let's say you wake up uh, in the morning and you see out of the window, you look out of the window and you see that the streets are wet. You can say that it must have rained last night. Okay, you have proof. It must have rained. All right, this is one way of saying it. Must have. Okay. Uh, so we like like we said before, we're covering must, may, or might, and could. Okay, those are the four we're going to focus on. Right. <clears throat> so. Basically, when we decide to choose out of the, uh, between these four, right? Let me tell you actually how they differentiate. Look at this here. Okay, must you use the uh, the this model? Okay, of deduction must when you're ninety five percent sure, where you're very positive and you have some sort of evidence, like in our first example. You look outside the window and the streets are wet. What do you say? It must have rained. Can you say it could have rained? Yeah. Can you say that? I think in the, yes. You can say it could. It could yeah, yeah, but uh, if you have evidence, you should say must, because oh, it's yes. clear. It's yes. clear. You know everything. Is, why else would the streets be wet? Did somebody come with a with a hose and water the uh, water the streets? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, so you see, it must have rained. Okay, you don't say it could have rained. Mm, no, it must have rained. Then after that, if you're not too sure, but you're 50 50, you say may or may. might. Mm. May or might. Okay. And then if you're not too sure, you're having doubt, then you say could. That's like when you're 25% sure. Okay, that's when you use could. And, and has to teach her. He has Sorry? to be uh, my friend. Uh, not. <laughs> no, in this case, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't make sense because we're talking about something. Um, oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah, about the past, you know. So, which tells you how likely you think something is, right? So it, it happened. Uh, so we use must have, may or might have or could have. So let's see this example here. 
All right. I got three phone calls from a new phone number. It must be my mother. She got a new cell phone. See, this person got three missed calls from a new number, and he's pretty sure that it's his mom because he knows he has proof or evidence. He knows that uh, his mom got a new mobile phone or cell phone. And here he uses, it must be. Uh, he could have said, it must have been. But he can say, it must be my mother, because he's looking at his phone right now. And he sees the missed calls. Oh, it must be my mother. Let me call her back. So you can use be as well, instead of, like, it's like present, OK? But mostly you would use past. All right, so let's have a look. So this is the way we form the actual. And by the way, okay, the, the next thing we're going to talk about, there are three categories, identity, judgment, and past events. Okay, so let's look at identity. We form it by having the subject in the beginning, then the model, and then B, and then the noun at last. <clears throat> So identity means something to do with uh, recognizing something, OK? So that, that car might be the new Toyota sports car. That car might be the new Toyota sports car. So if you're looking at a car, let's say, from distance, and you want to identify it, so you're not sure what car it is, but you're 50% sure. So you say, it might be that new Toyota sports car. Okay, or another example, this, this song could be the new Coldplay. Coldplay is a, is a group, uh, a band. So this song you're hearing could be the new Coldplay, right? So you're not sure, but it's possible, 25%. So if you're more, more posi positive or you're more sure, you can say it might be, okay? Or if you know pretty much, this song must be the new Coldplay. You can also say must be. Okay, so depending on your knowledge and um, if you have any evidence to, to show. Okay, so this is identity. When you're recognizing or identifying something. Uh, judgment is the next one. Judgment would be uh, pretty much the same as the first way to form it. So subject, model, B, and then we have opinion at the end instead of noun. So opinion. So we have... Um, you work for the government. That must be boring. Boring is the opinion. Okay, that must be boring. I worked for the government back in Australia, and I must say it was okay, but it was quite boring at times. So it must be boring. Usually, when people work for governments, it's a, it's a boring job. So the next one is the boss wants to talk to you. That could be bad. Now. Remember how I we spoke about the pronunciation and stressing, okay? How would you say this question? Where's the stress? Government. Yeah. Can you say this uh, question, Vladimir? You work for the government. Yes. Must excellent. Be boring. Yeah. Well done. Perfect. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. That stress. Because some of these sentences or questions that we're going to come, come across, you should use that. All right, so <clears throat> this is judgment, and we add opinion at the end. <clears throat> that could be bad, uh, that must be boring, uh, and so on. We'll, we'll have more examples towards the end. And the last category would be past events. So this is now based on the past. So we have the same subject, model, and then have plus past participle past participle, okay? So this is that sentence thing we can relate to now from the beginning. The house burned down, or how would you say this? This this actual question. Where is the stress? The house burned down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say burned down. The house burned down. The house burned down? Someone could have left a candle burning. So the focus here is on the house being burned down. Okay? Right? So then we go, someone 
could have left. See, now we're talking about past and could have left. Could have left. You could also say must have left or may have left or might have left. But if you don't have any evidence and it's not really obvious, then you just use could. Remember? We use could if you're at least sure, like 25% and, and below. All right? So then we have John isn't here. He may have stayed home today. This is just a normal sentence. I don't think there's a, any stress here. So he may have stayed home today. He may have stayed home. Okay? So may have 50 50. You don't know. He didn't come to work. Okay? He may have stayed home today. He might be sick. Right? He could be sick. All right, and so on. And then um, finally, the negative. <clears throat> to form negative statements with can't and couldn't. Okay? I know this is a lot to take in it right now, but we'll practice it, okay? So finally, we have the negative form, which is can't and couldn't. So this car looks cheap. It can't be the new BMW, because you know BMWs are usually more expensive. So you're, you're certain. You say it can't be, it cannot be the new BMW, because I know I have a BMW and they are expensive. Okay? So then you say, you work for Tom Cruise? That can't be boring. Yeah? You work for Tom Cruise? That can't be boring. Yeah? So that's also, you must, you know, if you work for an actor, you must be enjoying it a lot. So that can't be boring. And then, uh, who left a candle burning? It could have been Tony. He hates candles. Oh, sorry, it couldn't have been Tony. It couldn't have been Tony. Well, so here we use can't and couldn't. Okay. All right, that was a lot. Are there any questions? Uh, teacher. Yes? Uh, I'm confused about when do we have to use way, uh, might and may. I mean, it, it's actually the same. It has the same meaning, but yeah. uh, when do I have to use may and when do I have to use might? Actually, you can use both. I don't think, as far as I know, I don't think there's a rule where one can be used and the other can't. So you can use both. Uh, you know, where are we here? May and might. So give me an example. And then let's uh, see which word you can use. Think of an example. Uh, anyone? Can anyone uh, help? Use may or might in a sentence. Uh, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, there, there was a uh, there was a massive traffic jam uh, in the on the road. It might have been caused by demonstration. Yes, so you can say might have been caused or may have been caused. So I can use both. I, I believe so. Yeah, it may have been caused by traf by traffic jam. Yeah, look, honestly, I don't know if there is a rule for these two, but I, I think you can use both. Sometimes, sometimes uh, it's just a matter of knowing. See, uh, one might sound a bit better. You know, like in this mm -hmm. case, maybe it might might sound a bit better. So it might have been caused, or it may it may have been caused. I think both are correct. Uh, grammatically, there's no problem in saying either. So don't worry about making a mistake like that. OK? OK. <clears throat> uh, OK. Are there any other questions? Why don't we use can in positive statements? Can? Yeah. Ah, wh why do you think? But we, we use can't in negative state sentences. Ah, that's a good point. Does anyone, has anyone, uh, can anyone contribute? Why, do, why don't we use 
can in a positive. Uh, I I heard uh, the can uh, is used for the possibility, for the meaning of the possibility in English. Yes. Okay. So, but when we're talking about models of deduction, which is actually can is more of ability. Okay, and possible models of uh, ability and possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is models of uh, deduction. So when you're deducing uh, a uh, likelihood, okay, so you say um, someone's knocking at the door. It could be the postman. Okay, if you say it, it can be, it can be the postman. Um, yeah, you could say that, but actually, it's not really a model of deduction. You know, it's not a likelihood. You know, it's more of a ability. Can you do this? Yes, I can. You know, it's more stick to that. But if it, if you're uh, guessing, taking a guess about something, you use could instead of can. Okay, this is like that's the the rule, I believe. So okay, Vladimir, if you want to uh, guess at something or that something happened on on, on on a certain likelihood, we use could. It could be, or it could have been in a past tense. Yeah. Yeah, but we can use cannot. Right. Cannot, you can say yeah. In negative, you use cannot or can't, and could not or couldn't. Okay. So you say can't or couldn't. In negative form, yes, excellent. Okay, is any differences between cannot and could not? Between cannot and couldn't, okay. Uh, couldn't, you can use couldn't, but you have to make it. Uh, you need to add the uh, the what's it called? Have been. Couldn't have been, or it couldn't be, Tony. Hmm. Yeah, couldn't is like again. You're not too sure. But it's possible. It's likely. Can't. Basic difference is when you say can't be is when you're pretty sure you're positive. Like, um, like the first example given here. This car looks cheap. It can't be the new BMW. And you're talking about present, really, isn't it? It's, so not, it's like it's not. Okay, it's like it must not be the new. Excellent. BMW. It must not be. Yeah, that's it. It must not be the new. Uh, you can't really say that, but you know it because it, you know that BMW is expensive. So you say it can't be the new BMW, the BMW. But if you say couldn't, mm, it couldn't be. It's like it, it, the, it could possibly, but you're not too sure. So you say you couldn't. It couldn't be. When you say can't, you're really positive, okay? Because you have some sort of evidence that it's definitely not, okay? So that's the main difference, really. Thank okay, you. guys, no problems. Let me now get into the article. If I can find it, if I can find it. Okay, it's not in here. Just a sec. All right, here we go. <clears throat> right. Okay, my internet slowed down. Uh, since we're talking about uh, you know science and technology, here is a quick article about science and technology. Okay, I'm going to try and make it as big as I can. There's a lot of flash media going on, so it's slowing down, <laughs> and I can't delete these advertisements. I hate them. Okay. Can you read this below? Competition was brewing. Can I you read all see that? the pic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. So basically, this article here. <clears throat> it's uh, the title is "Students Go Head to Head in Human Powered Submarine Race." Okay, human powered submarine race. Right. So this is the submarine that some of these students have uh, built. Basically, you can fit one or two people inside. Okay, let's let's read and then see what this is all about. Okay. Okay. Competition was brewing just below the surface 
in uh, Bethesda MD, as student built human powered submarines raced against each other for the glory of good engineering. The 12th annual International Submarine Race, Races, ISR, took place the last week of June at the Naval Surface Warfare Center, NSWC, uh, Card Rock uh, Division. Students were given two years to build a one or two person human powered submarine, which they would race along a 100 meter course in a model basin at the NSWC. Because the subs aren't waterproof, subs as in submarines, <clears throat> the teams compete while wearing full scuba gear. Contestants must follow a 44 page manual, and subs generally cannot uh, be re reused from prior years. Because the race takes place every two years, teams have some time to plan their vessels. It may sound like the plot of a Hannah Barbara, or Bar yeah, Barbara, Bar Barbara? I don't know this cartoon, <laughs> Hannah Bar Barbara cartoon. But the submarine race is yet another way to get engineering students out of classrooms and into workshops. In this case, to create undersea vessels. <clears throat> The race was organized by the NSWC and the Foundation for Undersea Research and Education, F-U-R-E, FUR. And sponsors include the Oceanic Engineering Society of the IEEE and the Marine Technology Society. So F-U-R-E President Nancy Hussey said that the ISR was designed to get students interested in oceanic engineering not only to help them compete in the global technology economy, but to provide a better trained and experienced resource pool of bright and industrious students to help the defense industry and the government fill future national needs. Right, so the government is using the students' brains to build submarines and, and you know advancements in the technology. Right, so this year's competition saw 20 high school and college teams from places as far as Oman, Germany, and the Netherlands entering 22 boats. Winners were awarded by category. Once again, the team from the Ecole de Technologie Supérieure, I don't know if that was correctly pronounced, it's in French, uh, in Montreal uh, took home, that's in Canada, took home the prize for absolute speed, a category they've held a world record in since 2001. Specific prizes were also reserved for high school and homeschooled students, and awards were given out for design innovation and best use of composite materials. Right, that's quite interesting. Okay, are there any questions so far? <clears throat> about maybe any of the words or the vocabulary or <clears throat> no vessels right. pardon vessels vessels yes what's a vessel guys uh, I mean a kind of ship yeah it's, it's like a ship you know vessel is like a ship really and uh, but in this case it can be uh, underwater as well like a U-boat or a submarine is a vessel, a ship is a vessel, <clears throat> okay? Like you would say uh, for cars and trucks, you say vehicle, vehicle, okay? Vehicle is like a car or a truck, a bus, here it's a vessel, it's a ship, okay? Okay, guys, uh, let's get cracking into some of these questions. So I'm going to ask you some questions now, and please try to answer with uh, using the models of deduction, yeah, like... <clears throat> must have, may or might have, or could have. So the first question I want to ask you is, how difficult is it to build a human-powered submarine? I'll put, I'll put in the chat. How difficult is it to build a, a human-powered submarine? How can we answer this with uh, using models of deduction? It must be very difficult. Yeah, very simple. No, it must be very difficult. <laughs> yeah, but maybe they're different. It, yeah, go ahead. It couldn't be not so difficult for smart students. 
<laughs> yes, I like that. Yeah, usually smart students who are, you know, becoming engineers and, and whatnot. Excellent. Um, okay, let me ask you guys another question. Okay, this is interesting. Let's see what, what we have to say to this. Why don't we have cars which can be used as submarines as well? I think somebody might have um, uh, already done this experiment in the past. But why don't we have that today? Why don't we have cars which can be used as submarines that can go underwater as well? Wouldn't that be cool? You're going to have to think about this one. Oh. Huh? Hmm. Anybody? It could Maybe? be dangerous. Ah, yes. Absolutely. So we'll talk about safety now, yeah? So now, what's going through your mind is starting the, the, the sentence with must have or must be, uh, could be, you know, maybe, might be. <clears throat> Perhaps it can be waterproof or it can be made and waterproof easily. Yes. So I think in the article it mentions that um, they're not waterproof at the moment. See how they're competing? The actual, uh, these small submarines, they're not waterproof. So the passengers inside, they're wearing scuba gear, scuba diving gear, so they don't drown because water leaks inside. I mean, it's probably a very short race. Like they said, it's only 100 meters. And uh, so anyway, it's not waterproof. That's, that's one point, yeah? So Silva, what do you think? It's a tough one. Maybe it's a, it's the question is too tough. <laughs> okay, let me. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. I don't know if you can see it. Why don't we have cars which can be used as submarines? Uh, because it could be very expensive. Ah, oh, yes, I like that. It could be very expensive. Yeah. It must be very expensive. It must be very expensive. Yes, I like that about you. It definitely is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So it's it's the money comes down to everything, doesn't it? Okay, I'll move on. Let's do another qu another question. Who invented the submarine? Not this particular one, but in general, the submarine. Who invented it? Mm, it Russians, Russians, Germans, or Chinese? <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> In, uh, inventor could be a genius. Now, now it's in the past. So how do we say in the past? I could have been a genius. Yes. Uh, well done, Aka. Could That's better. Been a genius. <laughs> could have been a genius. Absolutely. Yeah. So it could have been the Germans, or it could have been the Russians. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next question now will let's talk about the actual war submarines. You know the war submarines. So how does a heavy war submarine not sink mm -hmm. to the bottom okay. of the sea? If you think of World War One and World War Two, they have these huge, heavy, uh, you know, submarines. Mm -hmm. They use for war. How come it doesn't sink? How come they never sink? Uh, it could have. Uh, it could have had a big balloon to float. A big balloon? What? <laughs> to float. <laughs> to float. <laughs> to float. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they use some sort of turbines or engines, yeah? <laughs> yeah? But that's, that's funny, yeah. Maybe they could have started off before they invented, actually, the, 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 the proper submarines with some sort of... Uh, inf um, uh, what's it called? Inflatable balloons. Actually, they use this technology um, for some sort of uh, experiments when they go deep, deep into the ocean. And then, in order for them to come back up to the surface quickly, they just inflate a balloon and then brings them up to the surface quicker, quickly. Yeah, so 
Why do you think that they don't sync? It might use a very advanced technology. Yes, I like that. Yep. It, it could be a magic. <laughs> it could be magic, yes. <laughs> okay, that's good. I like you. And now, right. Mm -mm. Now, the last one is how did Germany use submarines during the World War One, Or during World War One? How did, because I think if you know a bit of the history in World War One, the Germans made full use of that, that technology. Uh, uh, to torpedoes? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. what they did might... they do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How could they? German military might have attacked the other a warship yes. from under sea. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Good sentence. There is a. I read in an article that the the one of the German commanders when they started off with this whole submarine war. The Germans were very advanced at that time, so they, they one of the one of the submarines sank three British ships, like big ships, warships, within a, a very short period of time. That's how advanced they were. They were so they made really um, good use of that. So what else could you say? I think Heidi summed it up. Uh, German must have attacked uh, to to the to British ship by using torpedoes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the Germans um, must have used torpedoes or, to to attack other ships. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, let me go through the uh, some of the quick assessment um, questions just so we can you know solidify and concrete this information. Okay, let me begin. Okay, uh, Vladimir, I'm going to ask you just a quick question and see if you can <clears throat> use one of these models of deduction. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a sentence or scenario and I want you to reply to this. What, what can you say, right? So, you see a new fast red sports car. Oh. So now use, uh, you know, must be, could it be. It might uh, be Lamborghini. Yeah, excellent. It might be, yeah, that's good. So you're not sure, it's 50 50. Yeah? It must it might be yeah, yeah, it must have has, uh, max speed above 400 kilometers. Ah, yeah, it's a very fast car, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, another one. A woman walks down the street and everyone is taking pictures of her. She might be very beautiful. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Must be she really be beautiful. Sexy. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, she's really, really pretty and everyone just takes their phone out. Uh, yeah, but maybe it's somebody famous, yeah? Yeah. Mm, excellent. Okay, thank you, uh, Vladimir. Okay, let me ask Silva. You next. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, you don't need to see that anymore. I work for Colingo. Okay. So how would you reply uh, to this? You work for Colingo. Uh, you must like it very much. Yes. Excellent. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Uh, okay, next one. I'm going. I'm going to visit Las Vegas. Uh, what, what What is it again? Can you? Uh, I'm go I'm going to visit Las Vegas. Oh, uh, you must be very rich. Okay, I'm going. I'm not gonna gamble. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Excellent. That's very good. Yeah, good answers. Okay, uh, Sham, you, you, are you there? Yes, it's. 
Okay, uh, your situation is the president of Egypt resigns. They must be hit him. He must be hit him. Hate. Uh, he must be hated. You want to say that the people hate him, yeah? yeah, yeah. Uh, so he must be hated. Okay? That's good. It's strong if I say uh, they must be. No, no, yeah. Or you can say the people must hate him. You, you can say must, but maybe you can say. Uh, uh, Okay, that's all right. Let me give you another one. Uh, <clears throat> a man walks down the street and everyone is, is excited to see him. Again, sorry? Uh, yeah, a man walks down the street and everyone is excited to see him. He must uh, be... Um... Gentleman. Okay. He must be a gentleman. Uh, yeah, but what else could you use? <clears throat> use what? Sorry. Instead of gentleman. What? Sorry? What else could you say instead of gentleman? Yeah. He must be. Famous? Okay. Yeah, famous or. He must be the, I don't know, the president. Okay. Okay, but it's good. He is must be. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, <clears throat> Akka? Yes. <clears throat> yes. All right. Uh, okay, I want you to use now the negative, like can't or couldn't, right? Okay. All right, I work for Colingo. It could be boring. Negative, remember? Ah. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, negative. Yeah. Uh, it couldn't be. It, it couldn't be happier. It couldn't oh. be happy. What's the What's the first uh, What's the first word you said? Not not happy. The other one. It the first word. It. Yeah. Bo couldn't be boring. Yeah, that's better, okay. isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it couldn't be boring. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, one more for you. Uh, a man hits a police car with his car. Okay, now you can use any of the models of, of deduction. Mm -hmm. So a man hits a police car with his own car. So he smashes into the police car. Uh -huh. it, uh, it, it might be... Uh, a big problem. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, excellent. It might be a big problem for him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it definitely is, so it's going to be... <clears throat> it must be a big problem for him now, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. And uh, Ho, Ho, you just jo joined us. Hello. Anyways, guys, look, everyone's already left. Uh, Aka and Sham, thank you very much for your, for your class. Thank your you very attendance. much. Um, are there any questions? No? Sorry, teacher, if you mad at me, uh, today I'm out of mood. That's why ah, I'm that's fine, no problems. So much. So it's okay, no problems, it's fine. Uh, we will have our off days. But if there are no questions, guys, look, I want to thank you and congratulate you. You've done very well. I think everyone who was in the class done very well. And um, it was, uh, I think, a very good <laughs> step forward. Okay, guys, I'll leave you to it. I'm going to have to go now. Okay? Thank you so much. So I'll have see you nice next day. time. See, see you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Uh, see you. Bye-bye. See you again. Bye. Bye-bye.